How's it going guys and gals? Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. This is episode number 17 of Back to the Mac. And I gotta tell you folks, Mac hardware is healthy again. That's the title of this episode of Back to the Mac. Because remember, it was just a few years ago where Mac hardware seemed like it had no future. But there has been a remarkable turnaround over the last few years. And that's what we're gonna discuss in this week's episode. But of course, we also have a giveaway in this episode, so you definitely don't wanna miss how you can win this Thunderbolt 3 dock from our friends over at Glyph. So stay tuned for that. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and then smash that like button. Ugh, I can't say it. All right, so let's get to the episode. But first of all, this word from our sponsor. The Hyperdrive Gen 2 USB-C hubs come with awesome features like 4K 60 Hz video support or UHS-2 SD card reader support for super fast video and photo transfers to your Mac. And then there's the incredible 100 watt USB power delivery and super fast USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabits per second connectivity to your SSDs. The Hyperdrive Gen 2 comes in a six, 12 and a whopping 18 port version with tons of IO. It's great for the MacBook Pro, but it's also ideal for the iPad Pro. Hit the link in the description to pre-order your Hyperdrive Gen 2 for a special introductory price. Special thanks to Hyper for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. It wasn't that long ago when I had to ask myself the unthinkable question from the perspective of a Mac user. Would I truly have to start researching Windows machines? Yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but I was in that spot. I know a lot of Mac users, probably many people watching this episode were in that same sort of mind state because the future of Mac just seemed like it was at a dead end. It seemed like Apple didn't care about the Mac. It seemed like Apple didn't care about professional Mac users. The state of the Mac in 2016, 2017 was extremely dire. Thankfully, however, Apple sort of woke up and realized, hey, this is a real problem and we have to fix it right now. So it was, I think, April of 2017, they had that round table where they invited some journalists and they discussed the Mac. They were very candid, well, as candid as you're gonna be if you're Apple, right? But they were somewhat candid about the state of Mac, how they had dropped the ball, the mistakes that they had made with the Mac Pro design. And they even did something unprecedented for Apple at the time. They actually pre-announced two hardware products. They pre-announced the iMac Pro, and they also pre-announced the upcoming, or at the time, upcoming Mac Pro, the modular Mac Pro. So now fast forward, 2020, a lot has changed in the Mac hardware space. I mean, it's almost unrecognizable compared to how it was back in 2016, early 2017. It went from basically what seemed like a dead end to now we just have this, this wealth of, of choices. For as much grief as people gave Apple's executive team for the direction or the misdirection of the Mac a few years ago, and it was well-deserved, no doubt. I mean, they no doubt heard that chorus from Mac users about the state of Mac hardware or the poor state of Mac hardware. But I think that same team deserves credit for orchestrating what has been a really promising turnaround over the last few years. First and foremost, Apple had to do something that isn't easy. Admit that it was wrong, admit that it was going in the wrong direction, reverse course, and really change things. And the executive team deserves some credit for that because they did pump the brakes, they stopped, and said, hey, we're going in the wrong direction, let's turn around and let's do this thing over. And that's what we've seen over the last few years with all these Mac releases, it's been a really good thing. To be clear, it's not all daisies and roses. Apple still has some ways to go to fix Mac hardware, <coughs> keyboards, right? But compared to 2016, 2017, it's awesome. So let's start with the very first product, if you will, that helped kick off this re-emergence of Mac hardware. Before any new Mac hardware was released, the eGPU, or External Graphics Processing Unit, was really the first tangible evidence that Apple was trying to go in a whole new direction, really trying to cater to professionals. Initially, external graphics chassis support required workarounds within macOS, but eventually it became officially supported 
within the macOS beta. Apple has partnered with eGPU maker Sonnet at WWDC. They've also worked together with Blackmagic, so now you can buy the Blackmagic eGPU and Blackmagic eGPU Pro in Apple stores. eGPUs basically give the user the ability to add external graphics compute power via Thunderbolt 3 just by plugging in a single cable. So even if you have something really underpowered from a graphical perspective, like a MacBook Air or a Mac Mini, you can simply hit, hook up one of these eGPU units and instantly have access to graphics compute power. Now it's not the same as having, you know, full on PCIe access, but you might be surprised to find out how much an eGPU can help you from a compute perspective. You can see a definite difference when connecting an eGPU when editing video in something like uh, DaVinci Resolve or even Final Cut Pro 10. This was really the first indication that Apple was taking professional wants and needs seriously with official support for the eGPU within macOS. Now eGPUs are nice, right? But it was really the release of the iMac Pro in late 2017 that solidified Apple's desire to get back in the good graces of professional Mac users. And the iMac Pro lived up to its name. It still lives up to its name. It was a professional all-in-one computer. Uh, it was super powerful, it had Intel Xeon processors. You know, you could get an eight core base model or go all the way up to an 18 core model. You have much more powerful graphic options. You have more RAM. It's a really good machine for professional video editors, graphic artists, whatever the case may be. But my favorite thing about the iMac Pro and probably still one of my favorite things about it today is just how whisper quiet it all is. Compared to the regular iMac, it is so much quieter. And that's really, to me, one of the things I value about the iMac Pro. Now the iMac Pro, uh, for as good as it is, it's a pretty specialized product. Not everyone has five grand laying around to blow on a, on a Mac desktop. Uh, so you're not gonna have a lot of people buying it in volume like you would the MacBook Pro, which is by far Apple's most popular desktop computer. So it was the 2018 MacBook Pro that really, really started to get this ball rolling for Apple. And although it did not address the terrible butterfly keyboard switches, it did provide some much needed CPU upgrades, much needed graphics upgrades. And it also allowed for the very first time users to configure more than 16 gigabytes of RAM, which was a big deal. And despite the 2018 MacBook Pro's flaws with the butterfly keyboard, of course, and with, with the whole throttling issue, it ushered in a new way of thinking for Apple and its customers. No longer would Apple wait and wait and wait to push out updates, but now we get more regular spec bump updates. And that's a very good thing for Mac users. So we get that new MacBook Pro and I'm like, man, yes, Apple's back. They're finally back on their game. But then we get the 2018 Mac mini. And then I'm like, wow, okay, Apple's back for real. The Mac mini has just been updated and it comes in a space gray colorway with a six core i7 CPU option with 10 gigabit ethernet as an option. Mind blown, right? But then you have four Thunderbolt 3 ports shared across two Thunderbolt 3 buses. And then I'm like, wow, this thing is the most versatile Mac ever, right? At the time, at least until the Mac Pro. But this is the ver most versatile Mac ever. You can hook up all sorts of external Thunderbolt 3 peripherals to it. It's not fast from a graphical perspective, but you can always connect an eGPU, right? This machine provides a ridiculous bang for the buck. Even the RAM inside the 2018 Mac Mini is not soldered down. So if you're brave, you can actually go in there and upgrade the RAM yourself. It wasn't the iMac Pro, it wasn't the MacBook Pro, it was the Mac Mini that really like shook me and I'm like, man, Apple's back for real. They're taking this stuff seriously. And like the Mac Mini, the, the MacBook Air seemed like it was on hiatus forever. I mean, we didn't see a MacBook Air for years. And then in 2018, here we go. A new MacBook Air with that iconic teardrop design. For the very first time, the MacBook Air gets a retina display 
That was the big deal. Now, granted, it's not the most powerful machine in the world, but it's the cheapest laptop that Apple sells. It comes with a Retina display. It has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and it's already been updated since that release back in 2018. And I think it's a pretty good buy if you're just a casual user, you know, doing the internet stuff, doing email, word processing, spreadsheets, things of that nature. So the next big release was the 2019 iMac, specifically the 5K iMac. These new iMacs feature quad core, six core, and even eight core i9 processors. And after doing some testing, I saw that Apple's 5K iMac actually bested the entry level iMac Pro in some respects. Basically, for half the price of an iMac Pro, you get a 5K iMac that goes toe to toe with Apple's Pro Focus machine. Now granted, it doesn't do everything as well as the iMac Pro. For instance, it's much louder than the iMac Pro, but it does feature user upgradable RAM. I actually was able to put 128 gigabytes of RAM inside that 5K iMac. Check the tutorial for more details. And then in mid 2019, Apple pushed out another spec bump. This was actually after another spec bump that they did. I think it was late 2018 or they, they pushed out new Radeon Pro graphics. And I actually didn't even mention that, but that just shows you how seriously Apple is taking this whole thing. But this mid 2019 spec bump for the first time provided an eight core CPU inside an Apple laptop. It also addressed some of the primary concerns with throttling of the prior year model. So this was a really big deal. This 2019 MacBook Pro really pushed the envelope as far as performance was concerned. And then later in 2019, Apple issues an update to replace the entry level MacBook Pro from 2017, that 13 inch model without the touch bar. You remember that one? So in 2019, Apple pushes out an update to replace that entry-level MacBook Pro. With the $1299 starting price, this comes with a quad-core CPU. It comes with the touch bar, which is, you know, who cares about that? But it also comes with Touch ID, which is awesome. But this 1.4 gigahertz, and that sounds puny, right? But it's a quad-core CPU. The first time we've seen a quad-core CPU in Apple's entry-level MacBook Pro. This is perhaps the greatest bang for the buck as far as MacBooks are concerned. It's about $200 more than the MacBook Air, but if performance is something that matters to you, maybe if you're editing the occasional video, or maybe if you're doing a lot of video editing, this is actually a fairly capable machine that can handle quite a bit. All right, so here we are, the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019, finally released with a fixed keyboard. Yes, Apple abandons the butterfly switch keyboard and adopts, or I should say re-adopts, the scissor switch mechanism that is just so much better to type on. Yes, it features a slightly larger display. Yes, it features slightly higher resolution. Yes, you can configure up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. Yes, it has a pretty insane six speaker system, but none of that stuff really matters when compared to the keyboard. The keyboard is the standout feature with the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Finally, we have a keyboard that's actually nice to type on in an Apple laptop, go figure. And although Apple still has a long way to go to get this keyboard and all of its other laptops, this is the start. This is the flagship MacBook Pro with the keyboard that's worthy of a flagship MacBook Pro. I see this release as, as the symbolic end of that disastrous period of Mac hardware. Now, we as Mac users can look towards the future with, with full confidence that Apple's not gonna make this mistake again. If the 16 inch MacBook Pro release is sort of the, the symbolic end to a disastrous era of Mac hardware, then I see the new Mac Pro as the start of a new era. Remember, it was way back in April of 2018 that Apple pre-announced that new Mac Pro, and now we finally have it. And this new Mac Pro is everything that it was hyped up to be. Obviously, it's very expensive, but if you're a professional, you're in the market for a Pro Mac machine, this is it. Now, I used to label the Mac Mini as the most versatile Mac in Apple's lineup, but that's obviously been supplanted by the new Mac Pro. With the new Mac Pro, you not only get external upgradability with Thunderbolt 3, but you also get access to PCIe, so you can add your own graphics card, you can add sound cards, you can add capture cards, you can even upgrade the RAM. There's all sorts of things you can upgrade with this machine. It is the most upgradable Mac ever, 
and by far the most powerful Mac ever. You can configure this thing with up to a 28 core CPU. You can add just insane graphics via those MPX modules. This thing is an absolute beast. Last thing we're gonna talk about is the Pro Display XDR. Again, sort of a Halo product, Mac Pro Display Companion. It's a 6K 32 inch display, features ridiculous build quality, uh, insane contrast ratio and color reproduction. This is a production monitor that people would use to edit feature films. It features both a glossy standard option and a nano texture matte option for an extra thousand bucks. And of course that stand is an extra thousand bucks as well. And while this display and the Mac Pro are certainly not what I would call affordable, I'm glad they exist because hopefully some of that technology will trickle down into other products that are more affordable. So here's what I, I hope Apple takes from this whole experience. Basically three things. Number one, please don't rest on your laurels. Don't like feel like you've made this amazing turnaround and then just let up off the throttle. Like keep going, keep innovating, keep releasing new products, keep pushing out spec bumps, the whole nine yards, okay? So don't let up off the throttle. Number two, and perhaps most importantly, listen to your customers like, it was back in 2015 when people were complaining about that butterfly keyboard on the 12 inch MacBook. I think it was 2015, somewhere around there. If you would have listened then, you would have had this whole fiasco where people at the Oscars are calling out your keyboards, okay? So number two, please listen to your customers. And then finally, trickle some of that stuff down from the higher end to the lower end. Give us an affordable display with good build quality. Give us a Mac that we can upgrade internal components that doesn't cost as much as a Mac Pro. Hey Apple, and then give us that 12 inch MacBook back. I love that form factor, maybe with an ARM processor and of course with a better keyboard. Folks, what do you think about the state of Mac hardware in 2020? What do you think about this turnaround that Apple's made in the last three years? Do you think they've done enough? Do you think they've not done enough? Are you happy with the current state of Mac hardware? Let me know down below in the comment section. And also don't forget, it wouldn't be a back to the Mac without an awesome Mac related giveaway. We're giving away this Thunderbolt 3 dock from our friends over at Cliff. And one of the cool things is that you can install an NVMe SSD inside this dock. So that means you not only get additional IO, but you get lots of extra storage as well. So if you'd like to win this dock, head over to our Instagram page, leave a comment on the post related to Back to the Mac episode number 17, and make sure you follow us on Instagram as well. And that's it, there's nothing else to it. I make it super simple and super easy for you guys just because we appreciate our viewers very much. If you feel like it, please hit the like button if you appreciate this video and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac. Special thanks to Hyper for sponsoring 9to5Mac on YouTube. Of course, Hyper makes the Hyper Drive Gen 2 a ridiculously powerful 6, 12, or 18 port hub for your Mac or iPad Pro. Hit the link in the description to pre-order your HyperDrive Gen 2 right now for a special introductory price. An extra thanks to Hyper for sponsoring 9to5Mac.